And welcome back. Well, in this novel titled My Summer on Hate Street, three Milwaukee high school grads spent the 1960s following very different paths. It's based on real events and real people, including the author's own life. And joining us now is the author, Robert Rice. He graduated from Riverside High School in 1966, didn't want to go to college right away, and he didn't want to get drafted either, which makes a whole lot of sense. Welcome to the Morning Blend. Morning. Nice to have you. Thank you. Um, 1960s, it's, it's funny when my kids ask me uh, about that decade and what, what we choose to, to say about it. <laughs> what was it like to go to high school and graduate in 66? Well, the book is about exactly that. It's about the uh, very difficult times that young men faced uh, going through high school and then graduating in the mid-60s because if you decided not to go to college immediately, you then immediately faced the selective service draft and the possibility of going off to the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. So in the book, there are three characters, their friends, they graduate from Riverside High School in 1967 and they follow very different paths one um, goes to San Francisco because he's just totally enthralled with the hippie movement in the Haight-Ashbury district. The other joins the army and ends up in Vietnam. And the third one decides to completely drop out and uh, pursue an alternative lifestyle. Which one are you? None. This is no, this is a fiction novel. Okay, <laughs> but it is based on real people and real yeah. events. Yeah, there there and are some of your own experience as well, right? Yes, and, and people that I've met along the way and people that um, talked about their experiences and what it was like. I think what you'll find in the book is there's a, a theme here that everything was not what it appeared to be. Mm -hmm. And the protagonist goes to Haight-Ashbury because he thinks he's going to find the meaning of life and he learns that uh, things uh, he's got more than what he bargained for. Mm -hmm. And you were there. Hey, yeah, I was District. actually in the service, mm -hmm. but I was stationed in Sacramento, but I would go to San Francisco a lot because it was something to do. Yeah. But it was interesting because, um, because we had shorter hair than most males <laughs> yeah. uh, at the time. Um, we were viewed a lot, even though we would, they were our contemporaries, same age, and we would go to concerts and parties and be in the Haight-Ashbury District. But we were kind of viewed with a little bit of um, suspicion and skepticism. Mm -hmm. And I carried that with me. This story's been in my head for 20 years, and I, I really wanted to explore that. Of, of There seemed to be an underlying hypocrisy to the whole hippie movement. And so um, that's what is a, a, a strong theme in the book. What I think is, is, is interesting about it is kind of this dueling life of young men during that time. And you mm -hmm. talk about you know some of them just experiencing love and rock and roll mm -hmm. and kind of this free spirit and these 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 movements and this time in their lives where they were you know really having the time of their lives right. and then the other young men were just trying to survive in in Vietnam yeah. so you and your friends could be the exact same age and have completely different life experiences and that's really a main theme of the book I wanted to juxtapose the two different lifestyles of the exact same generation, exact same time, and I even took it down to the fact that these are three friends that graduate from the same high school on mm -hmm. the same day. Their lives could not be more different the day they walked out of that school. Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of experienced that you, you, you got some skepticism and things like that when you mm -hmm. were there. How, how did you feel that carried forward, you know, just in, in, fa in terms of like a nation feeling that they were lied to, things like yeah. that during that time? Well, I think a lot of us um, of the generation um, were very surprised because we thought, you know, we grew up and very patriotic and, and thought, you know, what the government tells us is the truth. And as it became more evident that we were not winning the Vietnam War and they were making up stories just to keep us more engaged, it became a shock. And then what happens is it really challenges your whole value system. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think, again, that's addressed in the book. These three men have to really come to the realization of what their value system really is. You joined the Air Force rather than being part of the draft and possibly having to be um, um, drafted into the Army. Mm -hmm. We all have to live with the choices that we make, even at a very young age, like right. high, sc high school graduation. Are you, when, when you write this book and you think back on it, do you regret the decision that you made? Was it the right decision for you then? And, and do you feel that way now? Oh, absolutely. I, I needed some discipline. <laughs> <laughs> Did your mom tell you that? <laughs> more, more than I'd like to recall, um, but it was a very maturing experience for me. But I also got to see a lot of the world and I got to see a lot of different people. And in that, I, I got to be able to look at my value system and what I thought was important in life. Um, I did later go to college uh, um, and even got to go in the GI Bill, which was, mm. a, which was a huge benefit for veterans. So it, for me, it was, it was the right decision. Um, I had a friend who's actually 
modeled in this book as one of the characters who made the decision to go to, via, to join the Army because he didn't want to give up four years of his life because the Air Force was four years, the Army was two years. Mm. And he said, four years is too much, I'm going to do two years. Well, he ended up in Vietnam and he almost got killed. Mm -hmm. And so those are the decisions. And I always um, tell my children that even just a little, it's sort of like navigating a boat. If you change just one or two degrees on the boat over the long haul of your life, you're going to end up in a much different a destination than you thought you were going and, and I think that's a lot of what we experienced during the 60s. That's mm -hmm. a great analogy. I like that One too. One to kind of keep and think about. For sure. I think this is a great book for people to pick up and um, you know whatever side you're on whether you're in the summer of love or you were in in the military you know whatever it was you're going to enjoy this book because it shows all different lifestyle choices and scenarios. Uh, you've got a book signing tonight at 7 o'clock at Boswell Book Company on Downer. It's my summer on hatestreet.com. Hate is H-A-I-G-T. Yes. All right, thanks for being here. Yes, and tonight's book signing is a benefit for the uh, Blue Lotus Farm and Retreat. It's an uh, organization that gives an outdoor experience for inner city kids and um, for disadvantaged and disabled kids. So it's That's a great, great organization. Super cool. Thanks, Robert. So, nice to meet thank you. Thank you. Thank you.